This small GoPro was released in 2016 and it's basically GoPro Hero 5 but in less smaller body and it's still actual today but for one purpose. We all know today's trend on vertical videos, but it's really hard to capture vertical POV footage. It's it's not possible with standard GoPro package. You have to find some solutions, maybe some different frames or some L brackets. You can use 360 cameras or InstaGo camera, but it's expensive. It's a cool camera to have, but often they lay on your shelf and collecting dust. But this camera costs only $100 and still have a nice image quality. Good enough for your reels. The way I use this camera when I want to capture some POV backstage or maybe me jumping on a ski, I just take it from my pocket, put it in my mouth, start recording and go. And I forgot about camera and just enjoying the moment of doing my work. Here is a good example of using GoPro Hero 5 session in action scenario on a sunset. I'm gonna hold it in my mouth and go down on this beautiful ski slope. Let's go! Sorry to interrupt, but I just started this channel and I need you to be active. So if you enjoyed this video so far, please uh, leave a comment about it or ask me any question and leave a like. It will mean a lot to me. Uh, thank you and let's continue. And now that easy, I am in vertical mode and I can shoot for my Instagram, Reels or Stories or TikTok. <laughs> this camera is really easy to shoot with but really hard to control because you have only two buttons here and here. This uh, record and turn on and off button and this is your menu button. And if you have this tiny mind LCD screen, it's not good but you still can do something with it. Most of the time I leave this camera on full auto and when I need to grab a shot I just tap once on this button, it's turned on and when I want it to stop I tap again and it's simply just powering off. And now let's test vlogging capabilities of this uh, small old camera. Now you can hear audio quality at uh, 20 km per hour and I hope it's uh, not too windy and you can hear it. Basically like a GoPro Hero 5, which is uh, not so bad. And how's video quality? How skies look? There is no doubt that this camera will be performed really well in a bright sunny condition like this. But it's really interesting how it will perform in the dark. Uh, so I'm now going to climbing gym and let's watch some test footage from there. It's fairly low light here. No surprises that you have noise in the darker area of your picture, but for me image still usable, especially considering my low effort to capture it. Of course you can put here ND filter, connect GoPro up and dial some settings, but for me it's not worth it. Uh, this camera just for quick capture moments, without thinking, as easy as that, just enjoying the process and not thinking about video. This is sick. But biggest downside for me is flickering, and to avoid that I am sometimes changing shutter speed. And forgot to turn it back on auto. As I can't see my footage on the camera, this has happened. Unfortunately my footage from other day was hardly overexposed, uh, because my shutter speed was set on 1 50th of a second. I didn't check it, of course. And now this is really slippery. I don't trust this. Let's do it another way. So most of the time it's like shoot on film and you will see results later. 
the best resolution for K 30 FPS. And also you can shoot 2.7K up to 48 frames per second and 1080p up to 60. I don't see a lot of difference between 2.7K and 1080p, but 4K definitely better. And also super view and stabilization don't work in 4K. In terms of stabilization, this is not the best camera. And sometimes it's better to turn off stabilization in camera than later add in in post using GoPro software. This clip you saw without stabilization and with stabilization in post. And now let me turn on stabilization in camera. This is stabilization in camera. I'm holding camera the same way, same settings, but now stabilization turned on. If you need best stabilization on this camera, it's better to use real steady, but for that you need to turn off stabilization on the camera before recording. I will definitely buy it when I'm gonna use this camera on FPV drone, but for now I don't need it, and most of the time I will keep stabilization turned off. In my case, 4K 30 frames per second and 2.7K in 48 when I need slow motion in wide lens without stabilization, more than enough. If we're going to talk about battery life for this small little camera, it's decent enough. Unfortunately, you cannot swap the battery, it's uh, internal. It can hold about one hour in 2.7K and will recharge within an hour. And unfortunately, you cannot use GoPro while charging. If you want to download clip using app, it's better to keep it short, because 35 seconds clip in 2.7K takes about a minute. That's it for now. I will continue enjoying using this camera. Thank you for watching. E Пока.